It is the 41st millennium. Mankind battles for survival across the universe, besieged on all fronts by the heretic, the mutant, and the alien. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. One faction of Space Marines stands amidst the chaos, the mightiest of the Emperor's warriors and a beacon of light in the darkness. This legion, the Ninth Legion of Adeptus Astartes, the Blood Angels. Hello, hello, hello. Where's my overhead camera gone? There is. You guys hear me okay? What's happening? What is happening? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hi Mike. Hi bye Francis. Hi Fock. Hey Vangini. How's everybody? What's happening? I'm going to finish these heavy intercessors tonight. 100%. That's the plan. That's the plan. And then might get on to a bit of Land Raider work as well. Um... There's not too much to do on these heavies. I think I'll start with... I think I'll grab some black. Some red. Maybe some yellow. I think that's... And maybe a wash. Did I say that last session? Yeah, probably. Probably said that, Mike. I think this time we will actually finish them. Because I've got transfers on them and everything now. So I'm just going to gently touch up around some of the transfer. Basically, like, they're. I would varnish them right now, but I guess I'm going to give them one one last half hour. Uh, how many peop death company are people bringing now? I think 15 is a good number. A 10 and a 5. Uh, some people are going more. I, I mean, we covered a list last week where someone was definitely going more, but I think fifteen is the. I think fifteen is a good number. Feels good to me anyway. Um, you could probably get away with ten. Two fives would be do doable, but um, I think if you're taking Lamartas, you definitely want the ten. Uh, with Lamartas, and then you want five. Um, Will Land Raider with an additional sponsor and be legal at tournaments? Do people even care about WYSIWYG anymore? I don't think they do. I think it'll be fine. So sometimes when you put transfers down, you can get a little bit of like um, transfer paper showing through, like a little bit of white. So that's literally all I'm gonna, all I'm doing here, is anywhere where the transfer seems a little bit too shiny or the paper is going through. When you varnish them, it does bring it down a bit as well. But I'm just. I'm going to do the tiniest little bit of painting around these transfers very quickly to end them, to finish them off. And then I'm just going to varnish these guys. Basically, I haven't looked at the weather forecast for a few days, but as soon as the weather forecast drops to like low humidity, I'll just varnish them and be done with it. I had fun playing my Land Raider the other night, I tell you. Felt good. Um, Speargrass has got 40 Death Company. Uh, trying to find the Rata that lets chaplains join the Death Company, it's not in the GW app. Ah, uh, it's not an Arata, dude, it's just on the chaplain data sheet. Uh, do you know what, it's actually on the Death Company data sheet. It just says something like on the Death Company data sheet, 
if a chaplain can join some other model, then they can join the Death Company instead. I'm pretty sure it's on the Death Company data sheet. Good evening, Marius. How are you doing? I already did a coat of Lamy and medium over the transfers, Mike. That's kind of my go-to thing. I put the transfer down, hit it with a couple of coats of the microsol and shit, and then and then do the Lamy and medium. And I always do that. Maybe I'm bad at laying transfers because I just feel like there's a couple of little like sometimes you get a little bit. Of, like you see the gloss, like they're, these these transfers are very shiny for some reason. I don't mind. I find that it's good practice to paint over the top of the transfers. It helps improve your accuracy, right? It's like in between these blood drops at the top. Super shiny for some reason. I'm sorry, I muted my phone. Yeah, it's still vibrating. It's probably some stupid Facebook thing. Um, mine always end up shiny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I paint over the top of them, I guess, so that they they don't end up shiny. I guess. Oh, you found it, Speargrass. You're most welcome. Fraser, good evening. How are you? You guys had a good start? I've had a pretty good day today, actually. Kids have been well behaved. Managed to get like an hour on Final Fantasy VII. Maybe, maybe actually more like 90 minutes. I mean, playing the Rebirth. See how shiny their knee pads are? Look at how shiny that is. And, and I mean, varnish will remove some of that shine. It will, but I'm still gonna I'm still gonna try and remove a little bit of it by painting over the top of it again. Once I've painted around the transfers, all that I've got left to do is um. There's like a wash on one of the guys. She's got like a laurel wreath type thing. I was going to put a quick wash on that and then I was going to re-rim their bases and I'm going to call these guys done. Um, it's going to be the first models I've finished this year actually. Which is kind of embarrassing but um, Uh, greetings, Helen Phoenix. How are you doing? Antonius, hello, hello. Would a thinned wash of contrast over the top help? I have no idea. Marius has got the missus on board. So are you gonna are you gonna play with the GT Marius or are you just gonna come and watch? Yes, I'm going to, I am going to do a matte varnish. I always uh, I spray all my models with with matte varnish. So I just I just, I just want to try and make them look as I definitely go for battle ready. Is my I really I think my paint style is battle ready plus. That's what I usually call myself. See this super old like red transfer as well, like because this was a transfer from like 1994. I'm actually just going to paint like red over the top of it to just because it's it's not quite as solid as I would like it to be I think this is honestly it's good practice for freehanding painting over the top of transfers
So is anyone working on 40k stuff tonight? I hope you enjoyed this week's tactics video. I thought it was a good one. I certainly enjoyed making it. Evening, Ardine, how you doing? Uh, your standard is the battle ready plus standard I commission at. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I knew it was a little bit higher higher spec than, than normal battle ready. I, I put in a little bit more effort than battle ready, I guess. But um, I don't think I'm good enough to rate my standard of painting above battle ready plus, Mike. You gonna try and play and see if I can win at least one match? Yeah, awesome, dude. Tickets go on sale Monday, by the way, for our GT. And honestly, we've had quite a lot of in, uh, quite a lot of interest from the folks in Aberdeen, actually. So, I would be surprised. I think it'll go one of two ways. I think that either tickets will sell out in day one, or they'll sell out in week one, or nobody will come. But from what I understand, quite a lot of people like there's like. Andrew said that there's eight people that messaged him asking straight away, like, could he reserve tickets? Um, and then there's like 25 interested in the Facebook group. And there's a few people that I know that are interested that didn't, that don't really do Facebook because not everybody uses Facebook, right? Evening, Eternal Crusader. It's a late one tonight. Well, this used to be my standard time, man. I used to usually always paint of, a, of an evening and I kind of got away from it for a little while there because the kids were being very difficult in the evening and the evening was the only time that I could spend with my wife um, the kids are being a bit easier now I must admit so this is the second evening in a row second Saturday in a row I guess I've been painting later like when I you know like in the in the in the in the block of painting that I used to do can't guarantee every Saturday yet because of kids I guess but um, like I said they are being a little bit a little bit easier you finished the Astraeus uh, brilliant good job you man you finished that Astraeus in double quick time when did you build it like a month ago man I wish my super heavy tank was still like a uh, Still a legal model. Breaks my heart a little bit that it's Legends now. Mike's looking forward to getting some painting time next weekend. Uh, Sungler's doing Assault, Intercessors, Ball Predators, Aggressors, and Two Captains. You're doing all that in one night. Um, Yveggy's working on Aggressors. Uh, Antonio's this kid just came down and yelled at him. I don't, my kids don't yell at me yet. It's usually me yelling at them. I've got that to look forward to, huh? Started at the 4th of March. So you completed it in basically less than um I was gonna say less than like three weeks. That's good going because I was gonna say a super heavy tank can suck the light if out of you a little bit, I feel like. Did you paint every single metal pin on the super heavy? Because that in and itself is a serious job.
Bad Francis says, does anyone think it's worth running a single gladiator? Mm. I haven't had a good experience. I have one gladiator tank. Uh, in the previous edition, I thought it was fine running one. I haven't had great experiences running one in night in tenth. Sorry. I tried it. I mean, if, if you run it in a list with a bunch of other shooting, it's probably okay. But if that's like your one shooting unit, then probably not so much, right? Uh, can I post photos? You can't post photos in YouTube chat, but you can post it in the Discord for sure. Uh, Rebellious is working on his first library in Dreadnought. Cool. You converted it, or you're you're asking for people to show you conversions, Rebellious? Do you know what? I actually need to do a little bit of painting on this guy's... Yeah, let me do this wash. Uh, Art of War had a Blood Angels guy from France running a single gladiator. Do you know what? There's a guy from France, apparently, that did really well. Because uh, a, a bunch of people messaged me and said, Have you seen the guy from France's stream? Uh... Have you seen the guy from France's Blood Angels list? Because I think he won a tournament with it or something, but no, I haven't seen it. Um, I obviously had that sponsored video to make this week, so I was kind of focused on doing that. The first, uh, well, I said it in my video, it's the first time the channel ever got sponsorship, so I wanted to... I guess I was worried it wouldn't be good, or I was worried about it, so I put a lot of time into it. Well, thoughts on Chris's chances Reaper and Tetmarine combo? I really dislike the the Reaper Cannon Highland Phoenix. Like I dislike it so much so that I just don't see it. Um I don't see it as a viable option. I guess Chris has done really well with it. Uh fishing for sustained hits and stuff. But I really dislike it. Um I actually don't fully understand the reason of adding the Tetmarine either, right? Because I guess you, you just add the Tech Marines so you get more hits, I guess. I mean, I feel like you probably have to shoot your Oath of Moment target to get the most out of it. And then you're fishing for sixes with the Twin Linked. I kind of dislike fishing for sixes on Wound Rolls. I feel like it's uh, swingy, and I don't really like to run things that I feel like are super swingy or super luck-based. It's, it's kind of one of the reasons that I dropped the Librarian Dreadnought, because I feel like Librarian Dreadnought's a bit of a luck-based character. Um, I did actually film the video about my Librarian Dreadnought and how he failed me. So that video was filmed, I just haven't got round to... Um, I just haven't got round to uploading it, but... Um, do you know what, I have a... Do you know what, it is actually I uploaded. Have I haven't got round to... Um, Like doing a thumbnail and setting the descriptions and stuff. But that video was actually kind of ready to go, I guess. Uh, wishlist for the other five detachments for the Blood Angels Codex this turn. I mean, I think Wishlist has surely got to be a, a more melee focused detachment. A faster moving, more melee focused detachment. Would that be Wishlist? Because that's the thing about the Blood Angels attachment is there's nothing that makes like there's nothing that gives you bonuses to charging, and then there's nothing that gives you bonuses to AP, apart from like attaching a Sangry Priest. You don't just have a stratagem that's like, hey, you can get some more AP. 
So I think like I'd want something that's faster and I'd want to be able to just get some AP maybe via a strat or something like that. Those are the two things that I think that we would need. Uh, you actually benched Librarian Dreadnought after one failed roll. Yeah, I mean, I benched him after one failed roll, but it was more about... Um, it was more about relying on it in the future, right? Because I, I usually get pretty close to the top of a tournament. Uh, I only go to a handful a year at the moment because of the kids. The last couple, like... I can quite often end up going 3-0 or 4-0. And when you're getting three zeros or four zeros, you're getting close to potentially winning. And then, and then you want to be winning, you know, when, I guess I don't want too much luck-based stuff in my list. And I feel like Psychic Test, like the whole army in the Library and Dreadnought build, at least in the Gladius build I was doing, the whole army hinges on that teleport. If that teleport fails, you you can, it can be huge. And yeah, I'm, I did. I didn't like the list because it, there was too much hinging on the Librarian Dreadnought and he's so expensive. I don't even think that list had any scouts in it. So I mean I guess I could have redone my Gladius list and got some scouts in it. Um, but I guess that just coincided with the Blood Angels detachment getting good or the Sons of Sanguinius detachment getting that buff. So I've never really been back I guess. So maybe I, I don't hate the Librarian Dreadnought as, it, as much as maybe I feel like I talk. but. He is something that you cannot re-roll. I mean, th that is a thing. I just... Maybe I just think that, like, a Redeemer? Or a, or a Land Raider or a Transport? Is much more reliable. And, like, there's nothing... Like, my opponent can't stop my Land Raider. I mean, I suppose... My opponent can um, stop my Land Raider, like, that happened this week when the Death Guard player um give me a second i think it's one of these stupid facebook chats that i'm in that's making my phone vibrate every friggin two seconds yeah, how do i mute this mute notifications mute until i turn them back on thank you um so i just think that i'd rather run something that i control 100% right like I control where my land raider is I can control my guys charging out of it whereas with library and dreadnought I can't control that stuff plus library and dreadnought is a is better at sh he's he's a better buffer for a shooting list than a melee list right because with a shooting list he just moves the unit and then you get to shoot but with a melee list he moves the unit and then you need to make a nine inch charge which sucks by the way nine inch charges are super unreliable so he's... He, he, Librarian Dreadnought's just like a Gladius thing, I guess. Yes, you can use him in the Sun's detachment, but he's more... He feels to me like he's... He works better in Gladius. Um, I guess there's no real two ways about it. He just does work better in Gladius. And I like Gladius. I just prefer... Playing Mally. Uh Last game you told Bing Guns Never Tire doesn't work in Overwatch. In the Firestorm Detachment, the rule is that everything has Assault. Do you think this rule doesn't work in Overwatch? Um, assault has nothing to do with it. The reason that they're just saying that if a unit ends in engagement range, a monster or... Sorry, an infantry unit ends in engagement range, then you can't Overwatch it with a tank. That you need Big Guns Never Fire. Uh, how would you rate the Redemptor competitively? Um, it's a tough question because I, ha I haven't taken a Redemptor to a tournament yet. I've played it six games. I think, I think I've played it six games in Sons of Sanguinius and I've won every game with it. So I'd say casually it's very strong. 
competitively, I'm sure there's certain armies that can just blow it off the board. If you come up against Tywin and they just hit it with one of those hammerhead tanks, that's going to be a big problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved the Librarian Dreadnought. I was bouncing aggressors and centurions around with it. And I, and I do think that was very strong. The Devastator Centurions and Aggressors. These knee pad transfers, for some reason, are the most shiny transfers I've ever done. They are those Forge World ones. But like, my god, are they shiny. Oh, you're talking... Sorry, you're talking about the Redemptor, not the Redeemer. My bad. Um, I think if you've got the Plasma on the Redemptor, it's better. Um, I think the minus one damage is pretty nice. I think they're kind of expensive for what they are, though. Like, 210 points or something? I'll probably give it like a three and a half. Out of five. I think it's playable. It's probably just not my favourite, the, the Redemptor right now. Because I actually have three Redemptors. I think that in, in 9th edition they were very competitive. The glare on these ones, on these knee pads, is so, is so much so that I can barely even see where my brush is going to hit them. I think this was the wrong choice of transfer for the knee, honestly. Run Redemptor's OK2 okay, is better. Uh, I already put a coat of Lamy and Medium over it, uh, Michael. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna var I'm gonna hit it with a spray can varnish probably in the next couple. Basically, with the spray varnish, you have to wait for like a day where the humidity is less than, I think, sixty percent is the aim. If you if you try and varnish when it's over sixty, you're you're gonna have a bad time. So I think I'm gonna, I'll, I'll use I use Google usually and just look at like the the ten day forecast. And when I see a day that has less than like sixty percent humidity, I just set a reminder on my phone. I have awoken. Life RPG, hello, good. Thanks so much for becoming a company veteran. Not even a battle, brother. You were a veteran life. Dude, thanks so much for becoming a member. I appreciate it. I know you were a member before, but um, welcome back. Welcome back. How are you? But yeah, I like the I like the spray varnish, and I'm all like every week on stream. I feel like I drop a model on the floor. So I think it's good for me to varnish my models because I'm probably going to drop one on the floor like next. But I'll, I'll drop a heavy inter... If, I'll probably play with these heavy intercessors before they're varnished because I'll have to wait for a good day of weather. And in the interim, before they're varnished, I'll definitely drop one. God, I hope... I just hope that the varnish does well on these things. Uh, who am I playing this week? I need to text somebody, actually. I might see if Miles is available. Um, Andrew's been struggling to be available the last few weeks. He, he was wanting to come on the channel with his Dakari. He's just been struggling to get availability. He's got some real-life stuff going on. So I don't know. I'd like to, I'd like to give Andrew's Dakari another shot. But um, maybe that's like uh, another week or two away. Hey Maximus, good evening. You really need to get someone to bring space marines? What what type of space marines? I've got two I've got two friends that play wolves, but every time I ask them, they're never they're never up for It's not even that they're not up for coming on the channel, they're just not a fan of like I'll a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of 10th edition.
Uh, wolves, yeah, I mean, I'd like to play Wolves. I've actually never played Wolves on the channel, despite having two, three friends that play Wolves in real life. I've never played Spruce Wolves on the channel. How annoying. But yeah, I don't have... I, I played Grey Knights a few weeks ago, but I guess you don't really class them as Space Marines, huh? Uh, wolves are in a bad place. I thought the Thunderwolf cavalry was supposed to be pretty good. I did invite Moradian Glory onto the channel, actually, because he reviewed one of my videos. Um, and I, I wrote him a comment saying he's welcome to come onto the channel anytime he wants. I don't actually really watch more. Uh, Moradian Glory. Does he... Um... Does he do battle reports on this channel? I was kind of hoping that if I keep winning on this Tabletop Tactics Open League, and I did win again this week, so I'm actually 12th in their Open League now. I was thinking if I kept winning on their Open League, maybe they'd invite me on to Tabletop Tactics. The problem is I swear a lot, and Tabletop Tactics is very friendly. I very rarely get through the first few minutes of my stream without managing to swear. Which is funny because I've got kids and I don't swear around the kids. Whenever I'm around the kids, I usually spell the swear words out. So I'll, like, I'll say to my wife, like, you know, da 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 da, S H I T or something, you know? But apparently on stream, I can't help myself but, from, but to swear. It's weird. Uh, Life says, are you able to look over a list for me? I have a Team GT coming up and just wanting a point of view, not fussed on getting it on the channel, uh, unless it actually wins the tournament. Send it to me, um, put it in the comments of any of my videos tonight, RPG. We'll get it on the, we'll get it, we do, we, the live show goes out every Sunday, 8pm every Sunday, so like 22 hours from now. Send the list to me tonight and I'll get you on the show tomorrow, man. Not a problem. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Uh, you need practice against Sisters, Templars and Custodes. So my friend that plays Sisters is not playing Sisters this edition. I played him maybe one time with them. The thing is, what's scary with sisters now? Because they lost... I was going to say, the, th the things that they had that really scared me... Because it used to be like Zeraphim. I always forget between Sephirim and Zeraphim. But I think it was Zeraphim that had the power swords that used to get like strength 5 power swords. They used to be insanely good at killing marines and they had like AP4. Well, that's gone. Their multi melters also used to... The Retributors used to be insanely good. I think that's sort of gone now. The Repentia used to be insanely good. That's sort of gone. Morgan Val used to be insanely good. That's sort of gone. So I'm not, I'm not sure what's scary about Sisters these days. Um, I did play them. The Oh, what's their tank with the indirect fire? That might be okay. Uh, Cameron, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Um... Templars I have no experience again against. Uh, Custodes, it's been a while. Custodes I only ever seem to come up against in tournaments, and yeah, you're probably right. I don't have an, I don't get enough practice against them. So when I do come up against them, it's it's ugly. Um, Carl, great tactics video this week. Uh, hope your transfers are playing nice. Yeah, and I'm I'm. I'm I'm gonna finish these guys. Well, I'm gonna finish these guys to a point where I'm just calling it in the next like half an hour. What's the time? Ten, five past ten. 
by half past 10 I'm pretty much just going to call these guys and say they are finished because they have been dragging on forever I wanted to dry brush the quillas on their chest. So I could do that. Um, I've tidied up most of the transfer now. So the quillas on the chest. I think that's about it. I think at that point I'm pretty much just going to say these guys are done. Oh, I wanted to rim, put another black rim around their bases because I've been painting them for so many time for so long now. The black around their bases is kind of knackered. So yeah, I can do that, and then we'll finish these guys in the next half an hour. Then we'll get onto a little bit of land raider painting tonight. I had good fun actually painting the land raider on the grot stream the other night. So I figured, and I, and I kind of figured out what I was going to do with the color scheme. So I've pulled out the other land raider. I've got it just sitting off stream here. So I'm going to put some black on the edges and the sponsons and these bits to try and break up this other Land Raider. Um, Evening Trivial Pursuit, how are you? Pop Halo, you need to come up and play uh, with my wolves. Oh, that's Garen. Good evening, Garen. Yeah, I mean... Um, see, I usually play a game on Wednesday night, Garen, uh, because that works for me but i mean if you wanted to play a game on a weekend i was gonna say i might be able to wangle it because of kids and stuff my wife usually wants a break from the kids on the weekend um i might be able to do like a saturday night one time or a friday night one time um but it would be good uh it would be good to play you before our gt garen because i don't want to play you on the top table having had no games against Wolves for like a year and then get beat by somebody because I, you know, because I've got zero experience against them. That, that's the biggest problem I think in 40k is for the people like me that only play like one game a week is like you only play your one game a week so then you come up to a tournament against something that you haven't played before or haven't played for a very long time. Um. I was going to say, I think I want to get a grey paint and my little dry brush. So there's a dry brush. Let's get a grey. Um. The Exorcist is the is the tank with all the flamers on it, right? Or is it it's multi melters or flamers? Like I said, the the Andrew was a big um, Andrew was a big uh, sisters player last edition, but he really dropped them very quickly this edition, and I think it was because he thought that they were weak. Harrison's painting the Gravis Blob. Yeah, I use that Gravis Blob a lot, Harrison. It's it's very good. But it's also um it's also very expensive now, right? They made it like a lot more expensive, it feels like. Um It's also so CP hungry, that Gravis Blob. That's kind of why I don't run it at the moment. Yeah, the emulator is the flamer melted one. So the exorcist is the one with the indirect missiles. Yeah, that's one the one I thought that was more dangerous. Um because it's like strength ten, I think it's minus two D6 damage or something. But yeah, the sisters players that I was playing against pretty much dropped. Just 
moved on to other things this edition, I guess. Sisters aren't strong enough, right? Michael's building a Predator Destructor. I'm really enjoying playing the Predator Destructors, you know that? Might be the only Blood Angels player playing Predator Destructors, but um, they're working for me, baby. Tony says his wife has a sister's army and they aren't bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't... Maybe it's just you have to play them different than you did last edition and people took a little while to get used to them. I mean, that does happen. You've seen Marvin kill a Bane Blade. She's scary. I don't know. I remember her being super scary last edition, Harrison. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to really fight her. I friggin' muted that Facebook chat, so why on earth is my phone still vibrating? Ah. My phone is my camera, by the way, so if, if, if the phone's vibrating, then the camera is vibrating. Who's messaging me at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night? F off, I'm streaming. <laughs> I prefer to talk to people on the phone anyway. I hate texting. But yeah, if I, if I could get practice against more... I, I, I also wanted to get some practice against Necrons, man, because I... I've had zero practice against Necrons and locally there's a guy called Matthew who finishes really high in all the tournaments and um, I played him at one of the last events I went to and uh, his Necron list was like super difficult to deal with and I didn't really know the target priority as well as I possibly could have because I don't play Necrons very much. So Necrons are probably one of the, and I know Necrons are really strong right now. Um, but yeah, I've heard horror stories about like the the double Catan type lists, and I have not, I've got no experience against Catans in tenth edition. But that you know that's the problem when you only play one game a week and you've only got a limited pool of friends. What can you do, right? I don't know what I can do. Um, a lot of people also said that you need to be able to deal with like a 20 man unit of skeleton warriors and you need to be able to kill them all in a single turn. There was a lot of talk about that before the last event I went to. I never actually played against Necrons in the last event, but... Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like because I only play one game a week, then... I just cannot get as much practice as I need. So if I go to a GT and I win the GT, it'll be because I got lucky with the round placings and I play against armies that I'm familiar with. Because if I play against armies I'm unfamiliar with, you know, I'm unfamiliar. If I beat them, it's just luck, probably. Uh, or it's knowledge from a previous edition. Yeah, I... The, I mean, it would be cool to play against Marius, but I need to be playing against someone that knows Elder, uh, sorry, Necrons inside and out, and is like crushing it, right? Like, I, like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play, I need to play so that I'm getting good practice. 
Um, because the thing that used to happen with uh, Necrons was like they're dis the destroyers with the orb of I think they call it the orb of darkness it's basically the, the jump style ability they've got where they can just teleport the whole unit so they just teleport the whole unit of destroyers into an obnoxious position like behind your back field and then wax a bunch of your key units early in the game um, that's what happened to me at the last tournament I was at the guy jumped Matthew, who's a really good Necron player. And in fact, I actually asked him if he wanted to come on the channel sometime, um, because it'd be good to get, you know, more different variants, variant armies. He doesn't live in the same town as me, which makes it more difficult to get him on the channel. But whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, he just jumped like ten. Well, it wasn't ten destroyers. Maybe six destroyers, normal ones, and some heavy destroyers behind the back line. And like blew up a bunch of my death company and blew up a bunch of other stuff and I mean I knew that Necrons can jump around like you have to expect that but when you don't play against something you don't remember all the full implications imp, what am I trying to say implications But yeah, I'm hosting a GT here in Scotland in um, June, so if anyone wants to come, uh, tickets are going on sale on Monday. I'm hoping it'll sell out. Uh, I'm doing it with another YouTube channel, the Plastic Crackheads. So if you know any of the Crackheads, uh, you'll probably be able to play. I think a few of them are playing, I think I'm playing. Um, it's the first ever GT I've hosted, so uh, or co-hosted I suppose. Um, hopefully things go well one game a week isn't bad right it's more than some people but it's also not nearly enough to be fully up with the meta and competitive um, I mean there's just so many armies in 40k now there's like 22 armies so if you only have one game a week even if you were able to find opponents of all 22 different factions or whatever, you'd only, after a year, you'd only have two games against them all. It's probably still not enough, right? Maximus troubles try, so, tr struggles to find people. Yeah, well, I often have, in the last, like, six weeks or something, I've probably had to cancel the army show twice, three times, because, like, one of the times I couldn't make it, because... I think one of my kids, yeah, one of my kids had to go to the emergency room. One of the other times, Colin couldn't make it because someone in his family had to go to the emergency room, and the other time, Andrew couldn't make it because someone his 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 dog needed to go to the vet. So it's like when you actually boil down real life things, it can be quite hard, I guess, to consistently put, have somebody available to do a a battle report every week. So yeah, one game a week is not enough to be considered competitive. I, I do the best I can. And I mean, I guess if you really wanted to... If you really... Yeah, I, I don't want to do myself a disservice here. Because I am the only channel that just focuses on Blood Angels, right? Like, I know Art of War do great content, but they do all the factions. And other channels do great content, but they do all the factions. So I am the only channel that just focuses on Blood Angels. So I feel like I, from the Blood Angel standpoint, I know things pretty well. I would I would say I know I know Blood Angels better than anyone. But what I don't know is all the matchups, I guess. And other channels like Art of War will know the matchups better. There, there's the plug for Art of War. I'm not going to plug them again. <laughs> um, I, get, I hope you know what I'm trying to say. Right.
Uh, I mean, wasn't Gav a member of Team Scotland? If you're giving him a hard time in a game, I think you're doing well. Gav is a member of Team Scotland. And the video that I've got ready to go on the channel, it's actually all recorded, is about my game against Gav, where Gav won by the skin of his teeth. I, I probably made myself do badly in that game, though, because I put pressure on myself just because I, I still have never beaten Gav, unfortunately. So he won that game 70-70. He won it by four points, 81 to 77. But at the end of the game, I got the whole board. I And, and here's the thing. That's actually a funny point, is I actually wanted to get a game against Gav the week of before the tournament. So I wasn't going to a tournament having not played Chaos Knights in 10th edition. And the week before the tournament, I can't remember what happened. I think Gav had to cancel on me. Or I had to cancel on Gav. I feel like I wouldn't have cancelled it because I really needed to play Gav, but maybe it was me. Um, Gav had to cancel, so I didn't get the practice game against him. And if I only lost by four points in my first game against Chaos Knights in 10th edition, I feel like if that had been the practice game, then the real game would have been hella close. Because the practice game essentially was hella close, or the first game. And a bone is what I want. Bone, 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 bone. Got all my paints nicely organised behind me now. It's brilliant. I've finally cleaned out this room. That's not a bone, that's Zandri. No, oh, no, it is bone. It's an old pot. Wow, I thought it was Zandri dust. It's almost solidified in there, that bone paint. I guess I need to get a new pot of it out. But yeah, um, I also did beat the captain of Team Scotland as well, so there's that. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I do okay considering I'm limited by real life factors reasonably heavily. My goal is just to, my goal really for competitive is to just win a GT at some point. Like I don't need to be the best Blood Angels player in the world or anything like that. I just need to win a GT at some point. Or maybe even like finish like second or something. That might be cool as well. Um, Hypocrypts are nasty, super close game, the last Brewhammer GT against them. The Canopic Port is super hard to deal with. Yeah, I mean, I have literally no experience against Necrons. So... Necrons, Custodes... Do you know what, I, I haven't played Imperial Knight since like the first week of 10th edition. You remember when everyone, all the Imperial Knight players were re-rolling all their ones? Not just a single one, they were re-rolling all their ones. I feel like I haven't played Imperial Knights since then either. So Imperial Knights haven't played in ages. Um, Right, I've got 10 minutes. 10 minutes to finish these guys and then that's it. The Heavy Intercessors are finished. Uh, first time playing a Rhino Death Company Marines combo today. Can't believe this wasn't our meta until recently. Um, well, the thing about the Rhino is that you don't get the move then charge out of it. So, I mean, the Rhinos with Death Company have always been decent. But I think that... Um, a lot of people preferred the Jump Pack Death Company because I think just one, like the Death Company usually kill what they charge 
when they kill what they charge, people like the death company with jump packs so they can just jump off and get another unit engaged, right? The, I don't know if you know this, Maulin, but the meta trick for the, the foot slogging death company is to take plasma pistols, fire them on high power and get one of your own models killed. Because if you do that, then the unit isn't at full strength anymore and you get sustained hits. And statistically, if you have 10 death company and one of them dies from a hazardous plasma roll, then you will actually do more damage with the 9 remaining with the sustained hits than you would with the 10. Because you're rolling like 40 attacks. So statistically, sorry, you would be rolling 36 attacks. And statistically with 36 attacks you should get 6-6s. Um, six so by um, killing one of your own guys with um, a high power plasma shot you actually do more damage when that unit gets into combat so that's the that's the super meta way that you're supposed to play that unit i mean some people like infernal pistols I'm a big Infernal Pistol person. But maybe it's just biased from years of using Infernal Pistols. Yeah, the reroll hits as well. We'll proc some more sixes. I think I did the math on it, and basically what it is is you lose one guy, but you should get four additional hits. So the nine guys with a sustained one, because of the rerolls to hit, should get 44 hits. So you're actually better off killing one of your guys by overcharging plasma pistol, and then... It's definitely a weird one, but um, that's what the math says. I'm going to paint the rims of their bases. They're done. Heavy Intercessors, you, you are done. Um, they might not be perfect, but they're battle ready plus. That's for hella sure. I've been doing these guys. I think I looked back on my stream because I was embarrassed. And I think I've been doing these Heavy Intercessors for the best part of... I think I first started painting. I did do some other painting in this time, so it's not like the only thing I was painting was heavy intercessors. But I think these guys have been lingering for like six months, and there was a period where I didn't paint them at all because I I I gone away. I was running infiltrators for a little while there, and I was like, when I was running the infiltrators, I stopped painting the heavy intercessors. All right, close enough. Uh, when's the next GT? It's the one I'm hosting, man. Uh, so that's the 29th of June. I'm not going to another event until then. So basically three months. I kind of wanted to go to another event where I was going to run Gladius again. Because obviously like I, I talked a lot about how I thought Gladius... I thought Blood Angels could probably win an event running Gladius. Like I said that. And then there's that one guy that actually went 6-0 at LVO with Blood Angels running Gladius. So I think I was right, saying that like I think Blood Angels can 
Gladius and Blood Angels is very strong. Uh, six and zero at LVO is insane. I don't think I I ever expect to go six and zero in LVO. Um, so uh, I had planned on running another tournament before June and running Gladius, but the second they made Sons of Sanguinius, they made those changes in the data slate. I've been wanting to play Sons of Sanguinius for a while, and do you know what? Everybody who watches the channel wanted to see me play Sons of Sanguinius ev anyway, because I was so sick of people telling me, like, oh, we don't care, John, that you've done really well, you're just playing Red Ultramarines. And at some point, after hearing that for six months, I was getting a bit sick fed up of it, honestly, because I don't think Blood Angels and Gladius are, is Red Ultramarines. But plenty of people told me they were. And also plenty of people basically were, they weren't boycotting the channel, but they just weren't watching the channel because they want to they want to watch Sons of Sang... Like, a lot of Blood Angels players want to play Sons of Sanguinius. They don't want to play Gladius. I was playing Gladius out of necessity. I felt like I was playing Gladius because it was the best way I had of winning tournaments. And I wasn't going to be stubborn and just play Sons of Sanguinius when it was rubbish because I'm stubborn, right? Like, I play to win. I don't play to... I play to be a good sport and stuff, but I, t I can tell you right now, it sucks going to tournaments and lining up on the table and thinking my army sucks right now. Like, that's just a generally really bad thing to have to, to do, and I hate doing it. And I've, I've done it plenty, right? Um, so I guess my point was, as soon as Sons of Sanguinius got made playable... And I wasn't even sure it was playable, because they only gave us one extra strength, but it turns out that one extra strength is actually really good in some situations. Power Fists, Blade Guard, seem to be two of the big situations. Um, so based on that, even if, if I, even if I wanted to go to an event now with Gladius, I wouldn't know what to run as Gladius, because I've, I've been playing all Blood Angels, right? There's nothing wrong with Red Ultramarines, yeah, and I don't even... I, I don't even think they're Red Ultramarines, like, my Gladius list, Marius, had Death Company in it, it had, um, Librarian Dreadnought in it, so it had two Blood Angels, two Blood Angels only style units in it, and I think I had Assault Centurions, and I think I had Aggressors, and Aggressors are like, hey, Aggressors are basically six guys in Gravis Armor, each with double Power Fist, how is that not a Blood Angel style thing, who... You know, two power fists on a on a marine is a is a close combat thing, right? But everybody was telling me, oh that's just red ultramarines. And it's very annoying to just hear that for months. Uh and Antonius is like, Gladius is red ultramarines. You are you were the problem, Antonius. You made me you made me get upset. Um I think Gladius is Totally valid as Blood Angels. It's strong, it's probably just as strong as Sons of Sanguinius. It's just a different way of playing. Um, and honestly, like, I've never... Uh, I've never... Conf See, I started playing Blood Angels in 2nd Edition, and if you go back to 2nd Edition, we didn't have Sangre Guard. Nobody in 2nd Edition had jump packs on their death company. And the reason that nobody in 2nd edition had jump packs on their death company is because their parents bought their models and my parents didn't have a lot of money so I certainly couldn't afford 10 jump packs on 10 guys, right? So my death company were on foot. And back in 2nd edition, everyone was playing tactical squads. That was like the, the bread and butter of Space Marines, maybe Devastator squads. So your army was... Tactical squads, rhinos, devastator squads, razorbacks, and maybe your one squad of death company, and everybody was on foot. I remember, I don't think it was until 3rd or 4th edition, the first time I got an assault squad with jump packs. Um, so, uh, the Red Ultramarines argument doesn't really work for me, because when I started playing Blood Angels for the longest time... I was just tactical squads and no jump packs. Hey now, I yeah, you I know you still support me. I'm just I'm just I'm just telling you how it felt to be a content creator that would get told every single day that or every single week that 
they were playing Red Blood Angels and um, what they're doing is I don't want to say invalid, but what they're doing is irrelevant because people just want to play the Sons of Sanguineous Detachment. And I get it, I want to play the, I, like, I want to play a melee detachment. I, I was honestly getting a little bit bored of playing Gladius because I guess I don't really play shooting lists. And maybe shooting lists don't... I, I, I don't suppose shooting lists have the same level of intricacy, maybe? Is a melee based list? I don't know what it is, but when I was just playing Gladius, I was honestly feeling like I was getting a little bit bored of playing Gladius. Whereas like, I, don't, I guess maybe it's just like in the Blood Angels attachment, you're just running in and going like, here's a hundred Power Fist attacks and I will just slaughter everything. And that's always really fun. And apparently maybe that doesn't get boring. Whereas like just shooting lists, you know, shooting a million different tanks or a million different eradicators probably just not my style you know maybe it was my style like when I started many years ago but the style has evolved and I, I need to be making charges and, and that's how I want to be playing 40k I guess so is what it is right uh, is the Glass Vegas open a fun event I'm thinking of going there for the first time I don't know I've never been to a tournament in Glasgow man the, the most south I've been in Scotland a tournament is Stirling uh, I think it's Common Ground Games in Sterling. I've been to an event there, and that's pretty good. Uh, even even GW realized that Sons of Sanguinius wasn't working. Yeah, I mean, I guess everybody realized Sons of Sanguinius wasn't working. It was one of the lowest win rates in the entire game, bar Dukari, right? Antonio says he's playing Sons of Sanguinia since the first time last August. Well, I played it for the... F I basically did the same, dude. I, I hadn't played it since shortly after 10th came out. And then I played it... I made a list as soon as the balance status late came out. I still think Sons of Sanguinius is a lot better with a couple of really heavy armor pieces in there, though, right? Like, I get two Land Raiders in my Sons list. It said I would give myself till nine, uh, ten thirty-five to finish the heavy intercessors. It's ten thirty-nine, so four extra minutes. But that's it; they're done. I'm gonna get. I'll get some varnish on them in the next couple of days, or the, as soon as the the weather allows, and then I'll post them in the damn Discord. Tell me, has anyone in chat finished heavy intercessors? Am I the first person in chat right now? That has actually finished a score of heavy intercessors because I know a lot of people don't don't rate the heavy intercessors. Well, I know a lot of people just run infiltrators. I did try that recently, and, and it's not like I dislike infiltrators. I just think heavy intercessors are great. Really think they're great. There we go. They're done. All right. No rest for the wicked. Here's the Land Raider. Take this turret out. Yeah, cool. Uh, Guillaume, how how are you doing, dude? Good evening. You have one squad of heavy intercessors done, but you need to base them. Uh, I have a half finished four squads. Okay, so a few people did them. I was working on building my second squad, but I never got around to spraying them yet. Mario still has them on the sprue. There were just more interesting models. Really? Heavy intercessors within Cotias is highly decent. What's Cotias bring to the table, Jack? Um, no grand reveal. Well, I mean, the grand reveal will be once I hit them with varnish, Terence. I was actually just seeing if these turrets... Well, one of them, they do move up and down, okay. I wasn't sure if I'd um, glued them or... It's been a long time since I got to this Land Raider, that's for sure. Okay.
Uh, after having painted your Blood Angels, do I varnish them? Yes, 100%. I use the spray varnish, the, the GW spray varnish. I think it's decent. He benefits from the detachment rules as long as you lead in a nearby space marine unit. Okay. That's cool. Odeus has a thunder hammer, right? Okay, I mean, I've got Coteus, I just haven't really run him this edition, honestly. Well, yeah, I haven't run him, period, this edition. I've been running the Calidus Assassin a lot. Uh, Crozier had a question, sorry, he said, Given your current list, do you think Predators are better than Vindicators? If only I'd had to include the points for one of them. Um, Vindicators do more damage than Predators, but Vindicators have the problem of, like, you need to be within 24 inches. So I think Vindicators are much easier to use in Gladius Detachment, because I used my, um... I used Vindicators in the Gladius Detachment, right? Uh, I used Double Vindicator in the Gladius Detachment at, at the tournament. Uh, I thought it was very decent, but then having used Vindicators a few times in the Sons of Sanguinius Detachment... Because you don't have any way of like buffing their movement or giving them advance and charge or any uh, advance and shoot or anything like that or fall back and shoot, then I think I just the predators that I'm running are usually on the flanks. They're usually sitting thirty to forty inches away, and they're, I'm usually using them to screen on a flank as well. I'm kind of using the predators to screen a bit on the on the on the on the flanks of my army, and um, while they're screening there, they're just popping off like glass cannons and auto cannon shots every turn. And if they die, like if a vindicator dies, it's kind of painful, right? Because it's like one ninety points. If a predator dies, it's only one thirty. Usually, they have to invest somewhat to kill it because it's still got what e ten, eleven wounds. Usually you're going to get a cover save, so you're, you know, you've got re somewhat of a reasonable save as well. So I kind of feel like Predators and Vindicators do different things. Vindicators are a much more damaging output unit that you can just throw forward. Predators, I guess in my list, like I said, they're going to they're gonna sit further back. They're going to screen. And they're just going to shoot off some last cannons and some auto cannons and the odd hunter killer missile, and they will kill things. Or they will do chip damage from 48 inches away. And um, they are they are optimal at killing terminators as well with that old cannon. So um, yeah, the two predators I've got are working in my list. Before I changed to Predators, I had two Vindicators. And the thing about Vindicators is, I guess with Oath of Moment, they generally kill anything. They just Oath of... You Oath of Moment and then have both Vindicators light it up. And it generally kills just about anything. Um, obviously, your, your Vindicators need to be much closer. And I guess there is a downfall in that. In, in that they... They will probably die pretty quickly when they actually get focused. Well, this is only 75 points. Huh. I could consider them. I, I'm i quite happy with my... I actually can't change my list at the moment. Because I can only change my list when I lose. Because of the tabletop tactics. Uh, thoughts on suppressors. I always thought suppressors are kind of costly for what they bring, right? You're thinking because you can get minus one to hit, I guess. The auto cannon on the on the destructor is better than the auto cannons that the the suppressors have because it gets additional AP against infantry.
Um, before I actually added the two Predators to my list, I was actually going to run two Ballista Dreadnoughts. The only reason I didn't add two Ballista Dreadnoughts to my list is because I didn't have the points to fit the Ballista Dreadnoughts in. And the Predator Destructors for me were basically poor, man, poor man's Ballista Dreadnoughts, right? Because I wanted to add two Ballistuses, because I think the Ballistuses with their built-in rerolls and the cheapness of them, and their 2-up save and their 12 wounds, generally mean that they can stand quite far away and they get a good amount of firepower every turn and they can kill stuff. So, um, yeah, I actually wanted to add Ballista Dreadnoughts to my list, but I couldn't fit them. Or, yeah, I just, I guess I just didn't have the points to fit them, right? Uh, anyone running Land Raider? The Cures. Um, I ran them at the, the tournament I was at. They work best inside a transport. Because you really want them within 9 inches to get the Melt uh, 2, is it? Melt, yeah, Melt 2 within 9 inches. But yeah, I mean, best tanks, I suppose, at the moment are Vindicator tanks. Land Raiders. Ballistus is good because it's cheap. I guess I could argue that the Predator is also good because it's cheap. There has to be something to be said for somewhat decent, but also being cheap. I mean, you know I've made a tier list, right? Um, of all the tanks. So, it might be worth going to watch the tier list. But I'm sure Vindicators, Land Raiders are going to be high on the, on the tier list that we made. I mean, that's what my attack... Like, my Gladius list for the tournament I did really well in was um, Ballistus, one Ballistus, Two Vindicators, a Repulsor, and I feel like there was one more tank. Um, maybe there wasn't. Maybe it was the two, the two Vindicators, the Ballistus, the Repulsor. Huh. In the tier list video, can you convince me to get the first indicator? They are very good. Let me um, let me pull up a screenshot of that last um, battle. Uh, Yeah, I had two Vindicators, a Repulsor, a uh, Ballistus and Library and Dreadnought. In that Gladius list, I also had six Aggressors, six Eradicators, five Heavy Intercessors, and three Inceptors. So I actually had... 15... I had 20 Gravis Marines on that list. Oh, 21 if you... No, 22 actually. So I had 22 Gravis Marines. Two Vindicators. Uh, two Dreadnoughts on the Repulsor. I don't know many Blood Angels players that went to a tournament with 22 Gravis Marines. I need my head examined, huh? I like making my own lists though, man. I don't like... I don't mind if people co copy other people's lists off the internet. I mean, there's... There's a lot to be learned by, like, you know, looking at who... 
who won an event, what they were running, etc, 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 but um, I guess I just like making up my own stuff. The thing about meta chasing though is you're only really chasing right at the very top end of stuff. So, like if you're playing with your mates and you're all you and your mates are all kind of casual, then is there a need to meta chase? I might paint all these ridges red, yeah, black actually. Break up the front of the Land Raider as well. Oh, I'm tired tonight. I woke up super early this morning. My daughter punched me in the face this morning. I have no idea why. She got me right in the eye. So I was up like super early just because I was like woken up by being punched in the face. She's only four, she didn't mean to. Like it was uh it was like see when you have a young kid sometimes like my daughter had a nightmare last night so I just took her into the bed with me. She just slept next to me and uh Yeah. That means I got punched in the face. I've had it before where I've like been kicked in the face. You just like same thing, she's have a nightmare or something. And that's the whole moment like you're just enjoying your sleep and then all of a sudden like BANG you just got kicked in the head or you just got punched in the face like you just wake up like reminds me of like one of these you know the comedy movies or something where you're just like wake up and you're just like what the fuck is going on like I just woke up and was like Annabella you just punched me in the face what are you doing and she's like I'm sorry daddy I'm like yeah it's okay what the? Like, why? Why? Dear Lord, why did you just punch me in the face? So yeah, I was up super early today, so I'm quite tired tonight, actually. I was going to say, it, te it teaches me, my wife said to me, it was like, that'll teach you to not just settle her. Because, you, you know, like, when she wakes up, you can't, you can't just sing a song or something and get her to go back to sleep in her own bed. I was just being lazy last night. I was like, I'll just pick her up and put her in the bed. Because uh, my wife's sleeping with our two-year-old, so, like, I've got a double bed to myself. So I just put her in the bed next to me so they don't have to sing a song and try and get her to go back to sleep for half an hour. Tell her that her nightmare's over, you know? It's like... Life's like, you should have settled her. I was like, yeah. If I'd known I was going to get punched in the face, I would have 100% just tried to settle her. <laughs> yeah, she's learning that melee combat is effective. She is indeed. What the hell, man.
But yeah, I actually need to... I need, like, one of my friends to beat me. One of the reasons, I guess, would be to give me the option to change my list on the Tabletop Tactics website, but also... I always feel like when you don't get beat before you go to an event, then you don't really know the weaknesses of your list. You need to lose a game or two to figure out what your weaknesses are. You just win all the time, you don't really know what your weaknesses are. But I actually need to get hurry up and hurry up and get beat with this list that I've got, even though I think it's a good list. You get beat to figure out, all right, is there a change I could make to make it better? Hello Gregory, how are you? It's been a little while, dude. You well? Hello Stephen, how you doing? Do I still believe 12 Blade Guard veterans uh, could be legit? Sitting on home, sitting on 9, thinking about getting another 3. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it could be legit. I'm the same, I'm sitting on 9 Blade Guard. I think I might actually have 10 because I got 1 or 2 free with that Warhammer magazine. So I was thinking of going to 12 at some point. The cool thing about Bladeguard is you can fit a boatload of them inside the Redeemer, right? You could fit two sixes plus two Judiciars inside a Redeemer. Seems like a lot of melee threat potentially inside that Redeemer. Um, could it be legit? I mean, I use Bladeguard every week at the moment and Blake are a lot better, I feel like, than they were last edition, because, like... But maybe it's just due to the matchups, because, like, last edition I played, um... against Death Guard a lot. And I feel like Blade Guard and Sanguinary Guard... Not that anyone's running Sanguinary Guard right now, but, I mean, they get the same weapon as Blade Guard, right? Strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. Um... I feel like Blade Guard and Sanguary Guard, last edition, could do no damage whatsoever to Plague Burst Crawlers. Um, and I think it was because the Plague Burst Crawlers were minus one damage. So the minus one damage just really, really hurt. Like, it hurt melee units that had a two damage weapon. And I guess that's why a lot of people were going Thunder Hammers last edition, right? Because that's the way of getting three damage and sort of countering that. Um, the Redeemer fits 12. No, the Redeemer fits 14, dude. It's the regular Land Raider that fits 12. Um, that's why people were doing six aggressors plus the biologists inside the Redeemer, because that's 12 for the six aggressors and then two for the biologists. Um, so the Redeemer does indeed fit um, 14. Which I thought would be super interesting to try. Uh, 14 Blade Guard. Well, there'll be 12 Blade Guard and 2 Judiciars. Or like 12 Blade Guard, 1 Judiciar, and then 12. Uh, 6 Blade Guard, 1 Judiciar, and like another 6 with like a captain or something.
This is a fresh Landry or a repub per stole one. I saw a printed Redeemer conversion bit in the thumbnail, right? That thumbnail is from a few weeks ago, but yes, um, they have some printed Redeemer bits. They're actually, they're not printed, they were bought on Etsy. So, I'm in the midst of painting two Land Raiders, I guess. This is the regular Land Raider. I was painting a Crusader the other night that I was, um, I'm converting into a Redeemer. So the thumbnail was those bits there, which I guess maybe after I've done this black bit here, I might slap some paint onto. Um, but I might have to go pretty soon tonight, actually, because I'm I'm probably gonna I'm probably only gonna stream for like ten more minutes because I'm pretty tired. I'll be back tomorrow night with the army list show, though. So um, if you've got an army list you want to submit for the show, submit it. Um, I guess before tomorrow. But yeah, no, I I found those turrets on Etsy because I was actually looking at like because I've been running my Crusader now for a few weeks as a proxy for a Redeemer, and I was looking on. I was I was I was actually like I probably just need to buy an Land Raider Redeemer. How much does that? And then I was like, oh, it's like seventy bucks. And I was like, all right, is there a cheaper way I can do this? And I guess the cheaper way I can do it is Etsy sponsors. Uh, how do we submit a list? You just put it in when when this stream ends. You can put comments on the stream, so just put your list into the comment. Like get an export from Battlescribe or get an export from the Games Workshop app. I just need a I just need your list as a text file in a comment in a YouTube comment in a new comment. Don't reply to a previous comment because I get um I get notifications for new comments. So if you put it in as a new comment, then I can find it and put it in as a. We'd, in the moment, we've got quite a lot of submissions, so channel members will get a bit of priority on their um, on their list submissions. What I mean by members is paid memberships, I guess. We still get, like, we definitely do some unpaid people every week, but um, if you pay, then you just basically jump to the front of the queue. Uh, do you think the Brutalis has any play? I don't know, man. I've had the Brutalis Dreadnought now, Jack, for like... Well, since it came out in that Strike Force Augustus box, like, probably six or nine months ago now at this point, right? Did that... Did Strike Force Augustus I come out before... Hey, Rebellious, thank you so much for subscribing. Did, did Strike Force Augustus come out before Leviathan? Because I've... I, I guess I've had it... I've had the Brutalis Dreadnought since then. And it's literally stayed on the sprue since then. So I guess I I don't think it's that good because it wouldn't if it was good it wouldn't have stayed on the sprue for nine months. Oh, it came out before. So yeah, I guess it stayed on the sprue for a year. So I guess I I really don't rate the blister spread not um, at all. I guess it's my one's been on a sprue for a year. I probably bought that Strike Force Augustus box, honestly, before we even knew the full extent of what rules it was going to be given, right? Uh, comments on any, on any, it can be, you can put a comment on any single one of my YouTube videos. As long as it's a new comment and not a reply to an existing comment, I get a notification about it, I add you to the list queue, or I add you to the show as soon as I possibly can, right? Augustus was last March, yeah. So okay, so it's it's literally sat on a sprue for a year. So yeah, I, I think based based on the fact that it's sat on a sprue for a year, I would say that it's not competitive. I've played against a few marine players at tournaments, I haven't seen anyone running ballistas. 
Do you know what? Games Workshop have done a really bad job of making some of the new Primaris stuff competitive, I guess. Like, those new Storm Speeders, very rarely do you see anyone running those. Um, Gladiator Tanks, very rarely do you see anyone running those. Repulsor Tanks, very rarely does anyone run those. It's like all the new Primaris models, or tanks and stuff, you can't really see any of them. I think the one that probably got the most the most play was the Redemptor Dreadnought, and then it got with a couple of points hikes and limitations, and we don't see as many of them now as well. So it's um, really interesting, I guess. Yeah, they haven't had a great track record of what they're doing with those. Uh, Antonius has run the Brutalis, it suffers for not getting the extra charge bonus, like the Curioso, and the minus one damage from the Redemptor. Yeah, I mean, you would think it would have the minus one damage, because it needs to be able to get into melee. If it doesn't get into melee, it doesn't really do any damage, right? Mm -hmm. I think that was why I don't run it, because I was just like, how, how are you supposed to deliver that Furios? Like, you can deliver the Death Company Dreadnought, because it's got the Magna Grapple. You can deliver a Furioso Dreadnought, because it's also got a Magna Grapple, but how do you deliver the Brutalis Dreadnought? Like, what's the play? Yeah, and if you need mortals on the charge, you can just do Tank Shock with something else, right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm really not sure about the Ballistus. I like the Redemptor. I do think the Redemptor is kind of costy at the moment, or kind of pointsy, whatever you would want to call it. Costs a lot of points, but um, It's all right for models to be pointy if they're if they're good models. I just don't know if I'd recommend. I don't know about the Brutalis Dreadnought. I don't run it. All right, yeah, I mean, if you're putting it in a Storm Raven or a Stormclaw, maybe. Isn't the Stormclaw light? Uh... Not many people run Storm Ravens, though. I feel like Storm Raven is another unit that should be competitive, but is not. Like I don't, I can't remember the last time I saw anyone run a Storm Raven. Even in like you know, just seeing people play random ass games with that are not competitive or at all. I don't remember ever seeing. I don't think I've seen a Storm Raven on the table in 10th. But, I mean, you could put a Brutalis in it. That would be one way of delivering the Brutalis, I guess. Yeah, send me the photos, Marius. Be cool. My buddy ran a Storm Raven against me. He was really excited, and then I blew it up turn one. What a nice buddy you are. But yeah, I mean, that's precisely the reason that people don't run Storm Ravens, right? Like, how do you even make them viable? I don't know if you can. <laughs> At least in the previous edition, it felt like the Storm Raven had some good firepower. Now, with all the Twin Link nonsense and the changes, I just don't even think it's got fire. Like, I feel like you could have maybe run it before, because you could have justified it by like, hey, I've got a Twin multi melter that's pretty good. I've got Twin Plasma Cannon, hey, that's pretty good. But I don't think you can even justify it now.
Right, I am definitely going to have to go to sleep because of getting that thing that, you know, when you feel a bit drowsy when you're just sitting around. So I think I'm going to have to call the stream. Ten past eleven. I'm old now. Can't stay up till midnight anymore. It gets sad, doesn't it? Like I said, I, I was up. I was up doing exercise at 7.30 this morning. My kid had woken me before that when they punched me in the face. So, um... Yeah, didn't get much done on these sponsors, but I did finish the Heavy Intercessors. And they have been lagging behind for how long now? Far too long. Uh, at least it's not as bad as the Custodes gunship. That thing's a joke. Do you know what? I played against some Tiger Sharks in 10th edition. I didn't think the Tiger Sharks seemed like they were very good anymore either, honestly. But maybe they're trying to get away from having all the flyers, right? Like, maybe Games Workshop just don't want people running lots of flyers. The fact that they don't have any obsec, I think, makes the flyers very difficult to play in of itself. Like, just, they're no, they've got zero obsec, so they're kind of hard to play anyway, because they just, there are a lot of points for not actually providing any, well, it's not called obsec, is it? Objective control. Um, do you think when we get a new death company jump guys they're going to have weapon options or just going to be one special weapon and everything else chainswords I don't know I'm scared that it is just one option and everything else chainswords and then if they do that how will we be competitive anymore is my question um, they might have to give us like good sangry guard or something to make that work as we all know right now, Sangre Guard are not good, I would say. Um, I thought the Adepticon reveal was going to be Blood Angels, because a lot of people had said to me that they thought the Adepticon reveal was going to be Blood Angels. Turns out it wasn't, and it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll be back at 8 o'clock tomorrow night to do the Army List show. Um, I should have... I was going to say, I always have a tactics video out on Friday, but I should maybe have a bonus video out this week, and it'll be that Chaos Knight game. And as soon as I know that I've got a battle report for Wednesday night, I'll pop in. Good evening, Galgar. Sorry, I'm, I'm taking off. I'm, I'm falling asleep here a little bit. Um, hopefully I sleep better tonight. So, uh... Uh, who thought it was Blood Angels? Angels? No, that's true. I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. Some there was a lot of there was a lot of rumors coming out from Valrax channel. That it might be um, Blood Angels. I guess. Let's hope we're gonna get some Blood Angels stuff sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, have a nice night, guys. I got a I got a bail. Um, I'll see you tomorrow night, eight o'clock. Armulists. Peace.